is uh, presently working as an additional professor in the cornea and ocular surface unit of RIO IGMS at Patna. She is specialized in uh, ocular surface disorders, all varieties of keratoplasty, special interest in pediatric diseases. She has authored more than 20 PubMed index publications, and she is also a reviewer of many national and international journals. Uh, she will be dealing with the art of suturing, which is very important uh, in coronal emergency situations. Dr. Raki. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, introduction and uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'll be speaking on suturing and uh, ancillary procedures uh, are to mag maximize visual outcome. Here, uh, I'll cover the corner part of uh, trauma. I have no financial disclosures or conflict of interest. I'm sure all of us, uh, no matter what speciality we work in, all of us see a lot of cases of popular trauma in day-to-day -day practice. And if you see the social uh, demographic status of India, then 30% of blind population of India lose their eyesight just because of ocular trauma. And they are under the age of 20 years. So it has become very important for us to have a great skill in managing these traumatic cases. Coming to evaluation and decision making, before proceeding to the surgery, we need to know what kind of injury we are dealing with, like penetration, perforation, or laceration. Or we always, uh, we need to prioritize the life-threatening injuries over the ocular trauma. We need to keep a history what treatment uh, patient has been initiated before coming to us. And since these patients uh, require general anesthesia for perforation repair, then we should uh, keep a record of last me. And since these uh, patients are uh, having a lot of medical legal issues, then we should know the uh, condition of eye before the injury and we should document it. In examination, the visual acuity is very important. Uh, if it is not possible on some uh, quantitative measurement, then we should go for uh, accuracy of projection or perception and life. And sometimes uh, even pupillary reflexes uh, have become very important, particularly consensual light reflex if uh, the case of unilateral trauma. Before planning for the surgery, we need to know the site and extent of the tear, whether it is limited to the cornea and going beyond to the cornea to uh, uh, manage these cases. And we also also look for any evidence of infection to uh, whether we need to have uh, intracameral injection or intravitreal injection during the surgery. Uh, these patients should be advised uh, for the use of protective shield to avoid any further damage in the eye and uh, always prepare a patient for journal anesthesia along with the uh, preparation for local anesthesia. And last not the least, uh, radiological investigation in cases where we are suspecting uh, any bony injury or any foreign body, then we should go for it and documentation. These uh, corneal trauma cases uh, usually very evident on uh, the torch light, but uh, for the decision making, it is very important to uh, examine these patients under slit lamp examination to see whether there is a opening of the wound or not. So this is a first case, uh, which is just two to three millimeter in size, but it has associated with the Frank Seidel's test. So this patient doesn't need any uh, BCL or glue. It has to be done with suturing. This one uh, is the case uh, on the contrary to first one. It is also of the same size, uh, but it was presented with, uh, it was having not the frank cedar step, but uh, it has just a pressure cedar test was positive in this case. So it can be easily healed with the uh, BCL or by itself with or without glue. So in this case, we didn't do any suturing and we just uh, did cataract surgery after two months of uh, healing of the wound. Third one is the small perforation located uh, paracentrally and associated with a lot of uh, foreign bodies or dirt. So in these cases, we need to clear this uh, uh, margin of the perforation and remove all the dirt before suturing uh, these cases. Now, keeping the function of uh, the cornea in mind, our surgical goal should be directed towards to achieve the 
watertight wound closure to maintain the ocular integrity and restoration of normal anatomical relationship, restoration of optical, optimal visual functions and prevention of possible future complications. So with these goals, we should have basic instrumentation with us like tenno, monofilament, linol suture. And I would like to stress upon here that uh, how to hold a needle. A needle should be hold at the junction of two third and one third to uh, a very smooth passage of needle through the corneal stroma at a proper depth and distance. Other than that, we should have a, a vitrectomy because most of the time these corneal traumas are not present uh, in isolation. They are associated with many underlying traumatized tissue which need to be corrected at the same time. Uh, now I would like to draw your attention towards the basic principle of corneal suturing to achieve the properly opposed wound edges without any incarceration of tissues and to avoid wound distortion or any misalignment of wound that can result into irregular astigmatism. So first of all, uh, suture placement. The in, at the time of suture placement, the tip of needle should be perpendicular to the corneal surface, not at the entry site only, but also at the exit site. And their distance from the line of perforation should be equal on both the side, means A and B should be equal, line of perforation to entry site and line of perforation to the exit site should be equal. The depth of the needle passage should be around 90% and should be equal on both sides of line of perforation. This is the actual ideal uh, placement of the suture and it should try to be close with it. Uh, if uh, there are various type of incision we get during uh, uh, surgery, one is perpendicular incision and in which we follow the same principle as I told in the previous slide. A and B should be equal to approximately 90% of the depth to get a properly opposed wound. If we won't follow this principle, we can get a misalignment of wound. Another uh, important parameter in closure of perpendicular incision or any other incision is the depth of uh, suturing. If you are putting a depth very deeply, then it can cause cheese wiring and it allow the uh, aqueous to come out and allows the organism to go inside and cause secondary infection. And if you are passing suture very shallow, then we may get a posterior wound gate. Another type of incision what we are getting is oblique incision. In this inc incision, we also we uh, actually follow the same uh, principle like anterior uh, uh, A and B, the uh, distance of entry wound to line of perforation or the uh, exit wound to line of perforation should be equal, but not at, at the interior surface, but at the posterior surface. Here, the posterior sur surface should be equal on the both the side of line of perforation to get the proper position of the surgery. Uh, third is curvilinear incision. The what is important in curvilinear incision is that it has two kind of incision. In center, it has a perpendicular orientation and in the periphery, it has an oblique orientation. So in this case, once we put suture in the perpendicular part, means in the central part, the peripheral oblique part usually get sealed by themselves. So here they may need uh, more suture in the peripheral part or may not. So this is a case uh, of uh, the curvilinear, uh, curvilinear uh, incision perforation. And here in center, I just gave one incision. Peripheral part was quite sealed, but since the patient was a child, I put more number of sutures to get a proper closer and uh, uh, safety. Another, uh, that one is uh, toughest one is uh, the stellate incision. Here, uh, many methods have been described in the literature to get the closure of uh, these incision. But I find uh, the closure of the peripheral arm first and then the management of the central part is the safest one and easiest one. So in this case, uh, this is a case uh, he came to us with the uh, already suturing uh, has been done. And in this case, the all suture knot was exposed. We just removed and we found slight uh, tissue defect in the center. So we just gave first incision in the center and then started giving large suture in the periphery and then coming to center by giving a 
uh, crisscross suture. But even after managing or giving so many sutures, we found that uh, wound was leaky at the end of surgery, and we just put one drop of cyanocrylate glue and uh, uh, found a very good result after two months of surgery. The corneal edema subsided, and all sutures were well placed, and uh, the patient has better visual outcome than before. Another very important caveat uh, in corneal tear repairs is understanding the zone of compression. So when we give a suture on the corneal surface, it creates a zone of compression, means cause of flattening all around it. And this zone of compression is in proportion to the suture length. If you are giving a small suture, then the zone of compression would be small. And if you're giving the large suture uh, length, the zone of compression would be large. And what is important in that? So if if you want to know leak in post-operative period or during intraoperative period, you need to have the overlapped uh, zone compression, zone of compression. Rather, just being in touch, they should be overlapped. So, in cases, uh, uh, it, actually, it is done to avoid any uh, wound leak, and this is also applied in a cases where the perforation is very large from limbus to limbus. Then, in the periphery, we used to give a large suture with widely spaced because large suture uh, have a uh, large zone of compression so they can be widely spaced and uh, they cause peripheral compression and flattening and uh, we want steepening slightly steepening in the center so we just give a small minimal tension sutures in the center which are closely spaced to avoid any wood leak so in this week we can just uh, try to maintain the contour of cornea as much as possible uh, another very important thing while managing the corneal trauma is a suture bearing. At the time of suture bearing, we should keep in mind that not uh, all knots should be very uh, uh, trimmed very short and they should not be buried deep into, into the stroma because you have to uh, remove it after two months or after six months, you have to remove it. And you cannot uh, bury it very uh, deep in the stroma uh, because it may cause so many, so much of a uh, uh, reaction and uh, it should not be buried in the wound line because if you want to remove the suture at the end it may cause uh, wound opening last uh, if you have a tissue loss then uh, it may uh, it may need some uh, uh, penetrating or lamellar grafts to close that wound so points to retain in this presentation is the good understanding of principle of suturing is essential for achieving the surgical goal of corneal trauma repair. The simple interrupted sutures of appropriate length and depth are required to get a good uh, optimal visual outcome. And an ideal initial surgical repair may eliminate the need for future reconstruction. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Doctor. Really, this was a really very nice uh, summed up thing where you dealt with the different varieties of perforations. Basically, the ragged ones, uh, how do you deal? Uh, do you remove all the suture not uh, sutures after the corneal perforation repair routinely or do you wait for the sutures to disintegrate and then only you remove? What's your uh approach? All suture actually need to be uh, removed and uh, the timing of suture is nearly 6 to 12 weeks. In pediatric cases, we remove suture uh, uh, nearly at one month when sutures are getting vascularized or loosened up or a lot of debris collected under the suture, then it has to be removed. Otherwise, all suture need to be removed before it disintegrates. It was a very nicely presented, I mean... The astigmatism, everyone must have this thing, these things in back of his mind uh, while doing a corneal suturing, a corneal perforation repair or any kind of a suturing because these principles uh, automatically play in and uh, uh, that ultimately uh, affects the visual outcome either in the form of astigmatism or minimizing the astigmatism. So this is really, this was very nice.